Today we're going to look at the top 20 weird oddball toys out there that are selling for some phenomenal money right now. Hey, it's Don. Today we're looking at the top 20 most valuable, weird, oddball, and unique toys that could sell for some phenomenal money right now. I tried to pick some that you could actually find or even have sitting in the attic, the garage, the basement, or out in the barn right this very minute. <music> Walks downstairs with owner and pairs and makes this lickety sound. A spring, a spring, a marvelous thing. sold separately in metal and plastic. Yeah. Now to me some of the most outlandish oddball ones are some of the robots that they created. They have no real resemblance to even what you would see in the movies back in the 50s and 60s. This is Mark's Big Lou and this is probably one of the earliest most bizarre ones that you will find. The face is just really out there. I'm not really sure what to say about the mouth. It's kind of almost on the creepy side for some folks. He's a moon man, that's the gist on it. It's a really unique and oddball one that can easily sell for a thousand dollars or more. If it has the box, it can go for even more than that. Now along that very same line is Duck's Astro Man. This one looks to have an original box with it as well. Duck's Astro Man, it's remote controlled. All of the remote controls from this time frame had to have a cord connecting it to the controller. This one can easily sell for over a thousand bucks with the box. Now robots of this type have been made for decades. This is a Yonazawa Horikawa Mr. Planet robot. It has psychedelic colors in it. It's a little later into the late 60s. This one as well can easily go for several thousand dollars in the box. Now this one's not only bizarre, but it's fairly dangerous, I would imagine. This is a gas-powered pogo stick. Not a lot of people these days looking out for a pogo stick, let alone one that would be gas-powered. It easily can sell for $1,000 any day of the week. Here's a truly odd one from the 1950s. This is Space Elephant. It looks like a robot elephant of some sort. It's a wind-up toy. It has the original box. It sparks and wobbles as well. It's sold for over $1,000, manufactured by K.O. Toys. Now, I'm sure every kid out there was interested in a battery-operated remote control Yeti. This is by Marks, one of the biggest toy companies back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, even up into the 70s. Really a hideous face with just a whole bunch of glued-on faux fur. These can easily sell for $1,000 as well. This is the most unusual weapon. It is specially designed for counter-espionage for Agent Zero M. It's called the Zero M Sonic Blaster. It fires a massive blast of compressed air, and this tremendous roar is the actual sound. Now, another company that made a lot of weird and oddball toys was Rushton. Very popular company for making anthropomorphic animals. Here's a real good example of just one of their basic ones. They also made some really bizarre and oddball characters as well. Now here's a real great example of one of the weirder Rushton figures out there. This is a anthropomorphic octopus with a rubber head. Really bizarre, really oddball one out there. This can easily sell for $1,500 plus all the way up to $2,500 if it's in great condition. Now, one line that was hugely popular when I was a child was the Stretch Armstrong series. This is Olivia and Ollie, two of the stretch figures that were available, and once again, they are both octopus. One is blue, that's Ollie, and one is pink, and that's Olivia. It was a pair. Very oddball, very weird, very bizarre also, but they were hugely popular back in the 70s and 80s. These can easily as well in this condition sell for a thousand bucks plus. Now no toy box out there would be complete without a 12,000 ton hydraulic forging press. 
Uh, this was made in China. This is a vintage one. These do not show up very often for the obvious reason. Not many children out there would be looking for this type of toy. In the box, this is one of the higher priced ones here. It can easily sell for over $3,000. Really weird toy to be marketing towards kids. Now, just like today, there are toys marketed towards Halloween, Christmas, and the whole works. In the 1920s, this pumpkin vegetable figure was extremely popular and could be found on poster prints postcards, greeting cards, and decorations of the day. And this early plastic, more than likely celluloid figure, sold for well over $2,000. Now, many people consider clowns to be creepy, weird, and oddball to begin with. And this early 1870s wind-up toy here is no different. This clockwork clown riding a tricycle basically sold for over $2,000 and is truly a bizarre, weird, and oddball item as well. Where are you going, Tony? Look at Jiggle Mask. Jiggle the dog, Jiggle, he goes with you when you explore. Just pull his leash and go for a walk. He's your dog for sure. What's your dog's name? Jiggle! Jiggle the dog, Jiggle, he goes with you when you explore. Just pull his leash and go for a walk. He's your dog for sure. Jiggle the dog, when you pull his string, he walks five feet from Romper Room. Now, this one is extremely weird and bizarre. This is Spooky Kooky Tree. It's a tin lithoed wind-up toy, once again by Marks. It moves, the eyes open up, it rolls across the floor, battery operated with the box, just a bizarre oddball item. It easily sold for over $2,000. Now, here's a very interesting pair of Moon Doctors. One is titled Moon Doctor and the other one is titled Dr. Moon, but very obviously the very same characters. These are wind-up toys as well, very odd and unique. The atomic symbol can be seen in Dr. Moon's eyes also. Just a really bizarre looking toy. Now each figure could easily sell for over a thousand bucks. This pair sold for almost two thousand US dollars. Now, a truly weird and bizarre series of toys came out in the 1980s by Ideal, and they were Boglins. Now, most Boglins are not worth much money, but there are some variants that were only released in a few different countries across the globe. This here is Wart, and this is the Wiggling Tongue version of Wart. Very unique, very odd to say the least. He also comes with some of the miniatures. These came in several different sizes. This one easily can sell for a thousand bucks in the box. Not only does Wart come with the Wiggly Tongue version, there is also a hairy version of Wart that can easily sell for thousands of dollars. This one here sold for over eight thousand dollars with multiple bids now ideal was known for making some low budget and odd and bizarre toys to begin with this is a set of mini monster dolls now these have always reminded me of the monsters obviously not the same characters they're not licensed products or anything like that each one had its own specific type of character. You've got Wolfie, Vampy, and Dracky. They can easily sell in the four and five hundred dollar range each. This lot of three here sold for over fifteen hundred dollars. My favorites, though, have always been some of the robot series that they've made. Now, this was created by one of the founders of Atari. Atari brings the computer age home. And this is Andy, the personality robot. Now, this is one of those toys most people probably have not seen. They are made in limited number. It wasn't something that was mass produced. They still do show up. They can easily net you a thousand bucks. Now, most people who grew up in the 70s and 80s will remember My Pet Monster. This is this is the first one that they released. A little bizarre, a little bit out there. The color schemes are really unique. And this is a boxed version here. This one easily sells for $1,000 to $1,500 in the box, but this isn't the weirdest one. Now, what's weirder yet, besides just being a My Pet Monster, is My Pet Football Monster. It's basically the normal My Pet Monster to some extent with a little different color scheme, a football jersey on, and then a soft vinyl football helmet. That's about the only difference. He still easily sells for over 1000 bucks, even loose, even without the box. Yeah! 
my pet monster. Now, besides mechanical robots, they also made mechanical astronauts. Now, this is Colonel Haphazard. That name has been used quite a bit in the past. Haphazard himself is basically just a sticker on a flat piece underneath a clear visor on the helmet. The rest of it is pretty much just a robot body of sorts with the spinning helicopter blade on the top. Really a bizarre item. Most of the ones that I've seen walk terribly, but he still easily sells for well over a thousand bucks. Now here's another version of an astronaut robot figure here. Once again, it's just a printed image of an astronaut on the front of a almost completely robotic figure this one easily can sell for a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars now one of the weirdest lines of toys in the 1960s and 70s were the weirdos this is a plastic figure there are model sets there are vehicles as well this was made by marks which again was one of the biggest companies out there the positioning of the weirdo figure with the car is kind of not the best location this is daddy i believe is the name of this one it comes in several different colors as well as several different sizes most any of the weirdos can sell for three four five hundred even more than that if you get the right color the right variant and the right size now it'd be impossible to talk about weird nod toys without touching on mad balls this one's an example of a soccer ball version, a much larger one. These are called Super Mad Balls. Mad Balls came in many different sizes, tons of different designs and monster faces on most all of them. Many of them can easily sell for hundreds of dollars like this one here. Now, as well as making Mad Balls that were actually balls, they also made bats. Here's a lot of three Mad Ball bats. These are basically blow-molded, wiffle ball bats with monstrous faces and characters on the face of them they can easily sell for two hundred dollars plus each one loose just as you see this lot of three selling here tyco's flower making basket comes with super dough so you can make beautiful smelling flowers not the wheel <laughs> And one last one here, this is Hugo by Kenner. It's the man of a thousand faces. Really weird, bizarre figure here. It's a bald rubber character that you could attach hair and beards, mustache, glasses, different faces, noses, lips, scars, teeth, and the whole works. If I remember right, it came with a like a pasty glue that would hold all of these onto your figure. This one can easily sell for hundreds of dollars, even if it's not complete. A complete box version of Hugo in excellent condition can sell for five, six hundred dollars or more. Not only could you disguise his face, but he was a puppet. Now, there's tons of weird and oddball toys out there, but these are ones that you could actually run into. You may have one sitting in an attic, a basement, or the back of your closet right now. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. <laughs>